Our scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, beginning with verse 13. It's the story of the road to Emmaus. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were take, talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them said, named Cleopas, asked him, are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, Jesus asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but they didn't find his body. They came and they told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but him they did not see. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe that all the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took the bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and he began to give it to them. And then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight. They got up and they, re oh, they asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scripture to us? They got up and they returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, Lord, our rock and our Redeemer. I hope this is one of your favorite gospel stories. It's certainly one of mine. Here we have two disciples, Cleopas and another unnamed disciple, walking home to Emmaus slowly and sadly. They were going home much as Peter and the other disciples were going fishing, everyone going back to their pre-Jesus lives. They obviously felt 
they had lost everything. They were going home. They were picking up the pieces. Life goes on. The dream is over. What happened? I have to tell you that I have a Kenneth Wyatt print of the road to Emmaus. It too is one of my favorites. Kenneth Wyatt, the painter, says that it was Cleopas and his wife who were the disciples on the road and that they were Jesus' aunt and uncle. Now, it's been a while since I've read the little blurb and so I can't remember how they were related, but they were, according to Wyatt. And I think his point was this, they should have known who he was because they were family. Perhaps that is one of the points that Luke is trying to make. Those who should have known Jesus did not. But maybe they needed to hear from him as a stranger to really hear. Cleopas and his wife are making this seven mile walk and as they walk, they talk and discuss and their words and their heart are heavier than all the supplies that they carry home from their annual Passover pilgrimage to the holy city, Jerusalem, the place that has turned into a city of horrors. <coughs> Excuse me. They've heard about the resurrection from the women at the tomb, but they haven't yet gotten that information down into their souls. And so part of their discussion had to include, what should we do? What we once thought was worth our lives has left us washed up emotionally, financially, physically, and spiritually. And then Christ joins the disciples as they walk along. The aunt and the uncle who have no idea who the stranger is. He responded to their grief their dejection, their shock and horror, as they told him how Jesus, who was a good man, who was a prophet, who was a man powerful before God and the people, had been crucified and buried, and how his body had disappeared from the tomb and so this stranger responded to them by taking them on a journey through the law and the prophets. Jesus said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Wasn't it necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory. And then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. In that journey, he showed them how the scriptures foretold all that Jesus did, all that he suffered, and even how he would die. And most importantly, what purpose it served. 
You know, the scriptures are an amazing thing. Moses and David, Isaiah and Malachi, Jeremiah and Ruth and all the Psalms all speak of God's anointed one, of God's suffering servant, but they speak too of how God's purpose and plan for the world has been there since the world began, and also how it will end. The scriptures are a way to come to know God, to come to know Christ. And it was through them that I have come to realize nothing can separate us from the love of Christ Jesus. And I have realized grace is available to all. The stranger who walked with these two on the road to Emmaus spoke of all these things. He taught them about the mind of God and the purpose of God and how Jesus fit in with it all. Were their hearts burning as Jesus told the story? Luke doesn't really say that, but he does say that the hour is late. And as they got near their destination, Jesus left them free to continue on without him. I think there's a point to be made here. Jesus' love is such that we are always free to turn our back on him. We can always close the door of our hearts against him, and we can bolt our minds shut in fear of how inviting him in might change us, how inviting him in we don't know what he'd ask us to do, but why would we? Did Cleopas and his wife, did they recognize Jesus? From what the story tells us, they did not, but something tells me that they knew him on some level. They knew he was okay on some level because they invited him in to supper. They invited him into their home. And we know that hospitality expresses deep vulnerability. Welcoming a stranger is always risky. The tables might be turned for good or for ill, and Jesus becomes the host at the meal, and the meal becomes an expression of thanksgiving and deepening faith for those disciples. And then, as the disciples see the risen Christ, there is both familiarity and mystery. There's recognition and there is confusion. Perhaps they remembered other meals. Jesus vanished from their sight and they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road? And they got up and they went back to Jerusalem in the dark. Remember, there were no flashlights 
or street signs in the dark to tell the eleven and their companions they too had seen the Lord. <clears throat> Those weary travelers felt alive. Their hearts had been renewed. The witness of the women at the empty tomb is now their testimony as well. I don't think they could wait to share the news. So they ran in the dark, filled with bread and resurrection. Who knows where they went from there, but we see the news, the good news, it traveled and communities began to gather around the story. The story of Jesus' resurrection. Listen to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 20. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the age for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and your hope are set on God. The good news, folks, it's not private, it's plural. Those who heard and believed the good news about Jesus Christ were changed in profound ways, they were born anew. That's what happened to you and to me and to all the folks who have called themselves Christians from the day of Cleopas's walk home till this very day. We have been changed in profound ways ways. Our Protestant tradition teaches us that the reading of scriptures and the study of scripture and the proclamation of the message of the scripture is the primary way in which we meet God. The primary way in which we meet Christ. Without the scriptures, we have very little. Without them, we cannot expect to know God, to encounter God, or to commune with God. But the story of these two disciples who walked on the road to Emmaus that first Easter day, tells us something more about how we get to know Christ. Something more about how we might recognize him, about how we might encounter him. It speaks to us of how Christ walks with us on our journey and how in the breaking of bread he becomes known to us. And we have been given a directive. We've been given a commission. We've been given a job to go and make disciples of Jesus Christ and to be the hands and feet of Christ in the world. I've asked this question a lot, off, a lot lately. What is it that God is asking each of us to do? Do you or I, do we need to go visit with somebody? Do we need 
to offer hospitality? What is it that each of us needs to do? In this time of COVID-19, we feel like we're in limbo. And for the most part, we are. But we can pray, we can read our Bibles, and we can ask God to give us wisdom and discernment. What is it that makes your heart burn within you? An excellent question for this time, for a time such as this. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen.